Hello everyone and welcome to the third game of the final match of the first match. Uh, Daniel Duba vs Hikaru Nakamura of the Lindores Abbey Rapid Challenge. Uh, Hikaru won the first two games and now Dubov needs to win two games on demand to get back into the match uh, or uh, to force Armageddon. So will he be able to do it? Uh, let's uh, see what happens. So uh, going back from d4, he now chooses c4. The English opening is on the board. Uh, we have e5 by Hikaru, knight to c3, knight f6, knight f3, and the knight to c6, the four knights of the English. Uh, and now g3, preparing to fianchetto the light square bishop, not worrying about Hikaru's early d5, uh, which Hikaru goes for, as white allows it. You could also block it with e4. Uh, but uh, Nakamura uh, plays this line as well. Sorry, Dubov plays this line as well. C captures, knight captures, and the bishop to g2. Uh, just continuing development. Knight to b6 uh, and castles. We have bishop to e7 and a3 now going for b4. Uh, we have castles by Nakamura and just b4. And it's very interesting. This game follows a game uh, from 2017. Uh, Boris Gelfand played against Edward. Uh, that uh, Gelfand won, and uh, I don't know if uh, Dubov knows of this game, but uh, I, I, I kind of think he does. Uh, but okay, bishop to e6, uh, and rook to b1 now, preparing some uh, b5, a4 later on. We have f6, strengthening the e5 pawn, and now just b5. We have knight to d4, uh, and okay, you, you will not be able to capture and then go for the pawn here, since after this pawn captures, your knight on c3 will be under attack, so just e3 captures and now there is one game in the database where queen captures was played but white lost that game uh so after that i don't think uh the queen captures is no longer played so bishop captures now putting pressure on the b7 pawn and rook to b8 hikaru defends it and now d4 getting rid of that backwards pawn e captures we have e captures and the queen to d7 now also popular is bishop to e f7 uh, as rook to e1 is coming and you don't want the bishop here to be a target but hikaru decides for queen to d7 which defends the bishop and also uh, connects the rooks, you can go some bishop to, to h3 moves or stuff like that. So rook to e1 and now rook f to e8. You will still prepare bishop to f7. We have a4 uh, and now of course bishop to f7. Uh, we have a5 now, kicking the knight back and knight to d5 now. Knight captures with bishop captures on d5 and bishop to f4. Now preparing b6 as the rook is still on b8. So like I said, this is uh, exactly the same like in the game Gate from Edward. Uh, we have rook b to c8 and now bishop to g4 with uh, a nice attack here. So forcing f5, which Nakamura goes for. And now uh, in the game we've mentioned, uh, 2017, Gelfand versus Edward, bishop to f3 was played. But here, Dubov first goes for bishop to h5, asking Hikaru, do you want to maybe mess up your pawn structure even further with g6 or do you want to move the rook? So here, Hikaru decides on rook e to d8 uh, and only now does Dubov go back, bishop to f3. And now uh, there's already a threat, just bishop captures followed by rook captures bishop on e7. So Hikaru moves the bishop back to f8 and now bishop to e5, just grabbing more space, uh, looking for the right opportunity to, to execute b b6. Uh, so Nakamura does it uh, instead of white, uh, we have b6 asking do you want to block uh, or do you, do you want to trade here. Uh, we have captures, uh, c captures and now uh, we have bishop captures on d5 with check. Queen captures and queen to a4. And now the bishop pawn uh, battery here really uh, uh, puts a bind on black's position. It's very hard for black to develop to make use of the rooks and also the a7 pawn is now under attack. Uh, Meadow is seeing ghosts, obviously. Uh, so rook to d7, just defending that pawn and now comes rook b to c1. Uh, challenging the rook, also if captures captures, you will be able to bring your own rook up, to, uh, up the c file. So rook cd8 uh, and now uh, just rook to c6 by Dubov, uh, grabbing even more space and like I said, this really makes it hard for, for black to uh, develop, but Nakamura is preparing bishop to d6 to finally get rid of this bishop. Uh, but before doing that, he pushes f4. It's unclear why f4 uh, instead of bishop to d6, but uh, he, he either wants a bishop captures and then you'll be able to capture here or he wants to open up uh, white's position. Uh, Dubov says, okay, I don't mind, captures. Now, even though this diagonal is now very dangerous, it's uh, very hard to get uh, those rooks into the attack. If you could get something like this, it'd be great. However, with the rook on c6, it's uh, easier said than done. So Nakamura goes for bishop to d6. Now, let's say if a trade happens here, if you get a rook somewhere over here, then maybe this will be a very dangerous attack. 
Uh, but queen to c4. Duvo uh, doesn't wait for the attack. He grabbed the pawn and now he wants to trade queens. So uh, the queen is under attack. We have queen captures on c4. Rook captures, bishop captures, captures, and now rook to d4. Going after the rook and the pawn. Uh, Nakamura would very much like to win back his pawn. Uh, however, rook e to c1. Dubov just keeps the, the tension. He wants to get his king here and uh, enjoy his extra pawn. And one very important thing uh, is that white is up a pawn, but also white's b pawn is taking care of both of uh, black's uh, a and b pawn. So that's that will be uh, that will be very important if ever a king and pawn endgame occurs. So h5 by Nakamura, uh, and now just king g2. Dubov starts bringing his king into the game. King h7, and now rook captures on d4. Uh, we have rook captures on d4 and the king to f3 now. So now the f4 pawn is nicely defended. Uh, we have rook to d5, putting pressure on the b5 pawn, but now just e6, Hikaru gives it up. And the problem is, of course, if you capture just e7, there's no way to stop the pass pawn. So king g6, you have to go after it, and now rook to e1. Again, just ha have that pawn, I'm just gonna queen my pawn, and there is no other move but to go back. So rook to d8 by Nakamura, but now e7, going after the pawn. Rook e8, blocking, but now rook to e5, putting pressure on the h5 pawn. So king f6, and now just king to e4. Uh, Nakamura, uh, Dubov says, uh, you, you can have the e7 pawn, my king is too active now. So uh, rook captures on e7, there isn't a better move, uh, and now we have captures, captures, and just king to f5, and it was in this position that Hikaru Nakamura resigned the game, and Dubov uh, gets one point. So now it's 2-1, to one, and Dubov now needs to win the final game, uh, well, not the final game, Armageddon will be the final game if uh, Duba wins, but he needs to win game 4 with the black pieces to force Armageddon. So, like I said, if a king and pawn endgame occurs, uh, this one pawn guarding two two of these guys is very important here. If if uh, Nakamura could get a pass pawn here, he could uh, maybe have some counterplay, but here it's just resigns. For example, king f7, you're gonna go h4, and now after g6, king g5, there are no more moves. If this, you can give up one of your pawns, and now after, let's say, f4, uh, you're just gonna gobble up both of these pawns and win the game easily. So yeah, after king f5, Nakamura resigns, and Dubo is almost back in the match. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Shai Gross, Ashfaq Ahmad, uh, Gabriel Luke, Blush Klarich, and Richard Wagner for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, uh, and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of the Lindores Abbey Rapid Challenge Finals, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.